Hey everyone, it's Certified Life Coach Angela Atkinson and I'm here today at QueenBeing.com to talk with you about why you haven't just left your narcissist already, if it's so bad. So like I said, my name is Angela Atkinson, I'm a Certified Life Coach, an author and a survivor. Uh, learn more about me and what I'm talking about today at QueenBeing.com and NarcissismSupportCoach.com and check out my books at BooksAngieWrote.com. If it's so bad, why don't you just leave already? Have you ever been asked that question before? Have you asked yourself that question before? And how did you feel when you heard me read that question to you or ask you that question? Does it make you kind of cringe or feel a little bit sick inside when somebody says to you, gosh, if it's so bad, why don't you just leave already? Well, here's the deal. Um, toxic narcissism is very pretty on the outside, right? And if you could say yes to me, if I asked you, how did that question make you feel? Did it make you feel sick? And you said yes. And if I said to you, did that question make you feel a little bit uncomfortable or a little bit nervous or like you recognize something? <laughs> you know, yeah, then you probably know what it feels like to walk on eggshells all the time, right? And if that's the case, you're probably in some sort of a toxic relationship, whether it's a marriage or a, a dating relationship or even a parent-child or a you know, employee coworker situation. Anybody can be a narcissist and anybody can affect you negatively when you are in any sort of regular contact with them as a narcissist or as a person. <laughs> so it's not funny. I'm just, okay. So when you're in a relationship with a narcissist or a sociopath, um, a lot of times from the outside, it looks just basically perfect. And this is especially true for people who aren't really, um, behind the closed doors with you sometimes you know they they don't really know what's happening they don't know about the dynamics that not everyone sees as far as they see uh, the narcissist might be just absolutely the ideal like say husband wife or parent you know or boss or whatever and most likely um, whether you want to admit this to yourself or not there's part of you that does not want anyone to know how very ugly your relationship can be on the inside am I right well and if you're in a toxic relationship with a narcissist and you still manage to have the time and the ability to talk to someone outside of the relationship about the problems you have, um, and I would guess if that's the case, uh, you will notice that it's reduced significantly over the years, um, if it ever is allowed to happen at all. Uh, but if, if you do manage to have that, that person that you can speak to about some of your problems, you know, you've probably gotten the line before, you know, gosh, why don't you just leave already if it's so bad, you know, or some version of that more times than you would like to admit. I know I did. And, you know, what What the thing is, is that what these people who really probably care about you so much and who really mean very well, you know, they're very concerned and genuinely so. You know, what they don't know is just how very, very hard your life can get and how very, very complicated your life can be. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about the complicated, convoluted price of loving a narcissist. All right, so we already know that when you love a narcissist, you might be mentally exhausted, right? And if anyone else calls you or, or texts you or emails you with some big problem in their life, and, and or, or maybe they just want to add problems to your, your life outside of your narcissist. Um, you know, the sheer thought of it, it might make you physically ill. You might want to vomit. You might find yourself becoming increasingly isolated in an attempt to maintain your sanity. Uh, and the simple act of engaging with normal, happy people, <laughs> well, that'll make you want to run and hide sometimes. And, and that sounds like I'm exaggerating, but I'm truly not, because the thing is that when you are in a circumstance where literally every ounce of your energy is sucked up by one of these narcissists on this toxic level. It, it just can take you from a beautiful, happy, or handsome, happy, whatever, vibrant, amazing person to this former shell, you know, a shell of your former self, so to speak, uh, you know, like a, a walking zombie or a walking, you know, like you're not even there anymore. It's, it's exhausting. And in some cases, you know, the narcissist will do everything in his power to add to your isolation, to make you feel more alone and to put you in a, in a position to be completely dependent on him physically, emotionally, and even financially. Okay. 
so here we are and here you have to wonder you know why would somebody want to have so much control over you right <laughs> it's it's we'll get to that and we've talked about it before but basically it, what it comes down to is even if you have a room full of people around you uh, the narcissist has a way of making you feel like you're still there all by yourself you're all alone it's you know and this, this is an exhausting situation so but you know what they what what people don't know can hurt you so you know of course you understand that your friends and your family members love you and mean well when they ask you questions like this right and it can seriously affect the way that you you see yourself in your life right because <laughs> you know when you're in these kinds of, of toxic relationships you you go through this tendency where you you know you might forget that you're even good enough in fact for many people in relationships with narcissists it gets even more serious than that you know not only does self-esteem just take a freaking nosedive as though they were <laughs> you know could it really go much lower at this point right but the isolation factor brings trouble to your relationships with people in you know other people in your life so see this is like a two you know two for one deal for the narcissist because you know by forcing you to keep secrets and forcing you to you know either shut your mouth or hear over and over again why don't you just leave already you know eventually you get tired because you're not leaving for whatever reason it is you have your reasons right but when you're in this position and the narcissist makes you or seems to you feel you react to the narcissist behavior by you know keeping your mouth shut by not contacting people because you want to avoid the blow-ups and the drama and and you know eventually here you are essentially his pawn or his his you know his little puppet because you've done everything he wants you're still not getting what you want from him but you know if you ask for it he'll say well give me more first you know it's exhausting so what happens when your friends and your family member you know mem members cut you off when you won't leave because what'll happen a lot of times is that someone you know your best friend your mom your sister whatever if you're in a, is, say in a relationship right with a narcissist and you, you're just exhausted you want to leave and you complain and you complain and you complain and you get support and then one day they go look you have to leave or I can't talk to you anymore about this because they just don't understand why you don't leave if it's so bad you know and at that point you know if you feel stuck you have no choice but to let your family member walk away because quite honestly you're so exhausted already and and you don't even have the energy to explain it to them anymore and and then of course you know your abuser gets what he wants you're more isolated and more under his or her control and you of course feel more trapped than ever so why do you hate it so much when they ask why you stay what bothers you about that right well here's the deal it's probably truthfully one of the most annoying and upsetting questions anyone could ask you because when you're in the thick of a narcissistic relationship it's just overwhelming to you on every level your senses are, are blown out your your you know your emotions are raw your or they're non-existent um, you're just not functioning like you would normally function and so why would it bother you so much if somebody would keep asking gosh why don't you just leave well for one you're the only one who really knows how very complicated it would be for you to get out right because you know that in whatever way they choose to go the narcissist will make it as difficult as possible for you you know in many cases you've already lost a lot of your friends and your money and you don't have a lot of money of your own because the narcissist you know has been controlling you or financially abusing you um, I just had somebody write to me yesterday about how her narcissist was she was trapped and, and she wanted to you know didn't know what to do she he had control over money he she had no ability to get out and and she stuck and this is so common uh, especially in male female situations but even in the other way around especially if kids are involved but anyway the point is that when you are in a situation with a narcissist you know people look at you and they go you're weak they go you don't you know why don't you just leave why haven't you already left what is your problem I thought you were smarter than that you know and and the thing is it's like a spider web uh, the more the abuser controls your life the more you feel trapped in that quote-unquote narcissistic web of control so a lot of times the people even if you are in a situation and you are the victim of the narcissist you may not even realize what's going on because it's so sneaky uh, we've talked about it before gaslighting you know bit by bit they'll tinker away on those personal boundaries repeatedly and systematically crossing them one by one and 
you know, and, and that, that looks like this. Here's an example. Okay, so say there's a married couple and say that when they first meet each other, they set up these deals and one of their deals is we are more monogamous to just you and me, right? Well, one day, you know, he says, oh, you know, say he's the narcissist in this situation. He says, listen, babe, I've just for my whole life have had a fantasy. I wanted to do a three-way situation. You know, could we bring another woman in for my birthday just for this one time? It'll be somebody we don't know, blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, of course you don't want to do that if you're whoever that, you know, in this case, the wife didn't want to do it. So if you're the wife, you don't want to do it, what are you going to do? Well, you know, he could continue to gaslight, continue to push, 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 and somehow, uh, you know, end up having you begging him to do a freaking threesome with someone you don't want to do a threesome with, whatever. So you do the threesome, and then at the end of all of this, you, you know, have, have broken your own ethical you know, value, or, you know, gone beyond your own boundary, your personal ethical boundary, and not only have you done that, um, but he has love bombed you to to get it done, and he love bombed you after it to you know make sure it stuck, right? And then as that continues, well, you know, he, you know, he might say, well, look, you know, what? we already did it once, it was awesome, let's do it again, you know, this time let's bring in two other girls, and you'll say, no way, you said that was a one-time deal, and then he goes on and on and on and on again, and he says, you know, hey you did it once before, what's the problem, we're still fine, everything's good, we'll just do it together, da da da, well then, you know, so fine, you fall for that, then a few weeks later, you hate it, you don't like it, it you wish it was never, you make him promise never to do it again, okay, I'll never do it again, a few weeks later, he says, listen, I know you don't want to do this anymore, but I'm really into this two girls deal, so hey, would it be cool with you if I go over to this girl that we did it with before, and this other girl, and you just stay home this time, of course you're going to say no, I don't want to do that, that's not how relationships work, and, you know, again, by the end of the time, you'll be convincing him to go because he will have gaslighted you into thinking that you're a horrible person for not letting him go and you take away all his fun. And, you know, and by the time you're you're done, you think that you're going to lose him if you don't just force him out the door to go have sex with these two other women. See, this is this is just a really good example of how it works. So anyway, the thing is that before you know it, you're in the middle of your worst nightmare and you can't tell anyone about it because you're so damn humiliated because you know better, because you're smarter than this, and because, quite honestly, you don't want anyone to see how weak you've become. And somewhere in your mind, you focus on the good stuff, because you know that it's right around the corner. Here comes the love bomb again. It's part of the ups and downs that you experience in a narcissistic relationship. It's a friggin' roller coaster, y'all. Of course, you know, it's not normal, no matter what he says. And despite the bullshit he's feeding you or she's feeding you, the way that a narcissist behaves is not normal. In fact, if you look, you know, at a relationship with a narcissist as though it were a mental illness, well, think bipolar disorder, extremes, extremes, the highest of the highs, the lowest of the lows. And, and that's exactly how the narcissist wants it, because quite honestly, if anything gets too comfortable for too long, the narcissist will immediately turn to um, starting a fight because he needs the drama, and if you won't fight with him, you know, he'll go find that supply elsewhere. So, uh, you know, narcissistic relationships are the most intense pleasure and the most profound pain. They, uh, they're, they're, they're the extremes of exhilaration, exhaustion, you know, <laughs> often in the same minute, exhilaration and exhaustion. They will make you the happiest you've ever been for a second and wishing yourself dead all in the same day, you feel me? But look, I'm here to tell you that there's one thing. You know, my mother-in-law, who has passed away, who I absolutely adored, uh, who was just amazing, always said to me something that I thought was entirely profound. She said, love is, is not supposed to hurt. Love is not supposed to hurt. How does that sentence make you feel? Love isn't supposed to hurt. So let me ask you, have you come to believe that being in emotional pain is like just part of it? Because apparently it's not the deal. Uh, and you know what else? Love isn't supposed to beat you up mentally or physically. Love should make you feel safe, not afraid, not trapped. Love should make you feel free. So when we get to this point, you know what I'm going to tell you. If you're being physically abused, please go to queenbeing.com, get on the resources page for emergency domestic violence resources, and get the hell out of there, because you cannot protect yourself mentally if you are being physically put in danger. If you are being mentally abused, you need to be working on a plan or, or coming up with an idea to move forward. If you are being physically abused, it is time to get off this video, get out of your place, and, and get into a situation where you can be physically safe, and then start working on your stuff, okay? 
With that being said, let's talk about the signs of emotional abuse. A lot of people don't realize, you know, again, when they're in situations with narcissists, they do not realize exactly why um, they're feeling crazy. They don't realize exactly why they feel suddenly like they're not, you know, they, they've lost 53 IQ points. Uh, they don't know what's happening. They think maybe something's really wrong with them. But that is one of the freaking signs of emotional abuse. If you really can't understand why somebody's so horrible to you and, and then you start to believe that all of the bullshit they're telling you about how terrible you are is, is the problem. So let's start talking about it, okay? All right, now emotional abuse in general sucks, but when it's inflicted um, by a narcissist, a toxic narcissist, it's incredibly pervasive, it's sneaky, it's underhanded, and you just often don't even realize it's happening. So it's harder to pin down or prove. It's just as destructive as other more obvious forms of violence. And experts say that it's domestic abuse if a person, quote unquote, makes cruel, unfair comments or otherwise emotionally attacks their partner in order to gain power or control over that person. Okay, do you hear what I'm saying to you? So if your significant other makes cruel, unfair comments or otherwise emotionally attacks you in order to gain power or control over you, you are being emotionally abused. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, let's talk about it. The signs of the emotional abuse might include your spouse, or partner engaging in one or more of the following activities on a regular basis. So we're going to talk about this. Do they scream at you? Do they swear at you as part of a narcissistic rage perhaps? Um, you know, do you, do you get called names, bitch, things like that? Are they harassing you? You know, when you're say you go to work and are you getting 53 phone calls a day? Do you get you know, are you being emailed, texted, or is your phone blowing up all day? Are you interrogated? Are you regularly degraded? Um, you know, are you are you having your self-esteem attacked? Is someone insulting you? Um, are they calling you names? Are they putting you down? Are they ridiculing you? Are you being attacked or insulted? Um, you know, for... Are the people that you care about being attacked or insulted by this narcissist? Let's say your family and your best friends and stuff like that. Are you being blamed for everything that's going wrong? Are you being forced to do degrading things like, you know, say being forced to kneel or being forced to beg for money or, as we mentioned in the example earlier, maybe being forced into sexual situations that you're not comfortable with? Um, are you being criticized for your thoughts, your feelings, your opinions, your beliefs, your actions? Are you being, you know, feeling or, or getting treated like you've done something wrong uh, for, you know, is this person jealous? Is this person, you know, and I'm not talking about a little jealous, I'm talking about crazy jealous, uh, you know, and that's often a sign that uh, they're doing something wrong behind your back. Uh, are they telling you that you are sick or crazy and need therapy, which is also known as gaslighting, um, or as part of gaslighting? Uh, are they using you know, any physical disabilities against you or putting you down for any sort of disability that you have? Are they blatantly ignoring you and denying basic facts and making up lies that better suit them? You know, again, part of the gaslighting process. All right, so this is where we're going to wrap up today's video. Let me ask you a question. Do you feel like you're trapped in a relationship with a narcissist after hearing this or did you already know that before today's video? Um, are you being emotionally abused? And, and you don't have to answer those questions here if you don't want to, but I want you to be honest with yourself and I want you to really consider what is happening in your relationship. You know, if you have sat here and you've watched this entire video and you're sitting here asking yourself, am I being emotionally abused? Honestly, um, you might be. <laughs> if there's a good chance that you are because you know, people who are in perfect relationships, they're, they're not out here looking for this video unless they're trying to help one of their friends or family members. And if that's the case, please refer them to queenbeing.com uh, for free resources and help on narcissistic abuse recovery. Have them visit NarcissismSupportCoach.com if they're looking for help with uh, personal coaching. If Or you can visit there and check out my free five-day uh, email course that is specifically designed to help narcissistic abuse survivors begin to overcome the fear that holds them back. Um, or you can send them over to BooksAngieWrote.com where you can get my books. All right. Um, in the meantime, I would just love it if you would down below there answer those questions for me. If you are, you know, share your experiences because you just truly you just don't know who you might help. All right. 
That's all I've got for today. Again, my name is Angie Atkinson. I'm a certified life coach and author and a survivor. Visit queenbeing.com for free resources, tools, and help with narcissistic abuse recovery. Visit NarcissismSupportCoach.com and BooksAngieWrote.com. Until next time, I'll see you then.